Nope. Maybe. It's been a long five weeks since the start of fall practice. Basketball season began October 15th, the first time teams were allowed to hit the practice court. And five weeks later, the long-awaited arrival of the 2013-2014 Columbus State men's basketball team hits the floor tonight inside the Lumpkin Center for the very first time. Hello everyone, welcome inside the Lumpkin Center on the campus of Columbus State University in Columbus, Georgia. Stephen Williams here with you as we get set for Columbus State men's basketball. Robert Moore in his fourth season at the helm here at Columbus State University, hoping to rebound off what was a very disappointing campaign in 2012-2013. A 13 and 13 record, struggled inside the Peach Belt Conference, didn't make it out of the Peach Belt regular season, did not qualify for the Peach Belt Conference Tournament, and it became quite the struggle for them, and they're hoping that with fresh faces and some guys that have grown up and added some leadership status, they're hoping that this will be the year they return back to their prominence, back to where they were before, and right back into the thick of things inside the Peach Belt Conference. Carver Bible College, the team that comes in here tonight as they get set to take on the Columbus State Cougars. It's a battle of the Cougars. Carver Bible, two and seven, coming here out of Atlanta, Georgia. Columbus State in its home opener, playing for the very first time. Robert Moore, as we mentioned, in his fourth season at the helm at Columbus State, and we had a chance to catch up with the Cougar head man prior to tonight's contest. Let's let you hear what the coach had to say. Cougar men's basketball coach Robert Moore with us as we get set for the season opener. Carver Bible College coming into the Lumpkin Center here on this Thursday night, coach. It seems like it's been three weeks since you all played against UAB. How has the layoff been, and how is this team progressing? Uh, the last time we played was November 8th against UAB. It gave us a, enough time to work on some small things that I thought we did very badly and very poorly at UAB. So, you know, I, I think our guys are excited, to, uh, ready to play and excited to play. But, you know, I, I feel like tonight would be a good game for us to try to get some of the, uh, some of the rust off because we haven't played in a while. So I think the guys are ready to go. How difficult is it to get to the start of the season, you go through a month of practice, you play an exhibition game, and then you got to wait again? How difficult is that for the uh, guys? It's, it's very hard because you have to keep their attention going by doing different things in practice. But it gave us some time, especially with having nine new guys, 
uh, only five guys returning. It gave us a time to work on some offensive stuff and also work on some things on defense that I thought we did very poorly against UAB. Let's talk about the makeup of the team this year. You bring back five guys, four of which are available to play tonight. B.J. Battle, mm -hmm. Nick Turner, Demetri Davis, Jermaine Morgan. Talk about what that crew brings back to the table for you this year. They understand uh, Columbus State basketball. They, they understand that we're going to play our zone defense. We're going to play uh, run our set plays uh, against man-to-man. -man. And I think they bring some continuity and some chemistry together that we don't have when we're dealing with those nine new guys. So they bring some – they're familiar with everything we do. And they also can play hard and tough in times because they played in the Peach Belt Conference last year. Nine newcomers, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. What's coming into this program this year? Uh, we got size. And I thought last year we had to call a fair catch to get a rebound. So now we got some size. We got some guys that can create their own shot. Kenny Funnelberg, Ty Harris, those kind of players. And I think you need those kind of players in the Peach Belt because uh, a lot of the coaches in the Peach Belt are so good at scouting your teams. you got to have guys that can break down the defense. So I think this year we added size and we added guys that can create their own shot. You look at what you lost last year, Winford Ivy gone, Idell Bell, Rory Miller. Those three guys were guys that when they were in there and healthy were putting up big scoring numbers for you. Who fills the void this year? Who do you count on to score for the year? Uh, we're going to depend on B.J. Battle to make outside shots. So he'll, he'll take most of the load from outside. And the freshman, R.J. Sessions, can really help him out because he can score the basketball. On the inside, you got Shane Haywood. He's a post player with his back to the basket that can score. We didn't have that last year because Rory scored all his points outside most of the time. So I think those three guys, Kenny Funderburg, Shane Haywood, and B.J. Battle are going to be our main scorers. And then Ty Harris and R.J. Sessions and those kind of guys can help them out when they're not having great nights. So I feel like we got enough scoring. We just got to play better defense and play better team defense and stop people from scoring. With the different personnel this year, with some post play, with some outside shooters, has it changed the way you've been able to play offense? Oh, yeah. I, I think it changed not a whole lot, but we were able to throw the ball inside and make teams make adjustments on whether they're going to guard Shane and D'Angelo and Brandon down inside. If they can't guard them, if they guard them and, and, and double team them, we can throw the ball outside for B.J. and R.J. and Nick Turner and those kind of guys to make outside shots. I thought last year a lot of times we took too many jump shots, but now we can throw it inside and make things happen and hoping the team collapse down on Shane and then we'll open up our outside game. How much does the change in the rule structure for you emphasize the ability to get to the basket? Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that you ask that question because we changed our whole – uh, transition offense just because of the rule change. We are mostly passing it up on transition. Now we're telling our guys, hey, put your head down, get to the basket, because the refs got to call a foul if they touch you going into the lane. So I think it changed our offense on transition, especially because now we're going to try to drive it to the hole and try to get in the bonus really quick and, and get to the free throw line and make some shots. Carver Bible, the team that comes in here, we saw them in this building last year in an exhibition game. What are some of the things that they're going to throw at you tonight? No, I, I think they're, they'll bring a lot of toughness. they got a lot of older guys that played basketball for different programs. Uh, it's, they're going to be hard to guard. So that's what we're really looking for from our guys. How well can you play defense tonight against a good team that got three really good guards and a good post player? So I think it prepares us for what we got to look for when we go on the road to play West Georgia on Saturday and also prepare for our Peach Belt schedule. So I think Carver Bob will be a good test for us. What's the most important things that you're looking for tonight? I'm looking for intensity and enthusiasm from our team, knowing that we can play hard for 40 minutes and I'm looking for the chemistry and what five guys can play well together that can keep us in games and keep the score down. And also, we got to play better defense. I thought we didn't do very well in defense last year, so I'm looking for the defense on the defense side of the ball tonight. Coach, season kicks off today. We're looking forward to it. Best of luck. All right. Thanks, Steve. Cougar head coach Robert Moore as he wraps up the preseason for them. They played an exhibition game against the University of Alabama, Birmingham, a Division I school from Birmingham, Alabama, out of Conference USA. They ended up losing that one by 20, 76-56. And he gets set for what he hopes is a much better result than what they saw on the court last year, hoping that with the fresh faces that he's brought in and some of the guys that are coming back helping to key the way, he's hoping that everything will right its way back into the winning column this season as they finished at 500 last year. On the opposite sideline, Rolando Lamb, a first-year head coach for this Carver Bible College team. Martin Carter Sr., the athletic director now at Carver Bible College, stepping away from the sidelines and the head coaching duties to just stick to his athletic director role. Brought in Rolando Lamb, who has great ties, has had a long basketball career of his own, a successful career, has a son 
Jeremy Lamb, who plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder, had a great career at Connecticut, so he's got great ties to the basketball world. He's pretty famously known, though, for a play that happened to him when he was in college, and we will show you video of that right now. It's interesting to see if they go zone or man to man. Looks from the set, they're going to go zone, force the ball outside. On the perimeter, they got Duncan and they've got Rolando Lamb. They got their best shooter, Brown. And Brown might throw it in, take the touch pass to the corner. Looks like Duncan's going to make a cut off a screen to the left corner. That's my guess. Yes. There it goes. Inside it goes to Lamb. He squares up for the shot. And he's oh my God. Unbelievable. That was back in 1984, a much younger Rolando Lamb playing for Virginia Commonwealth, VCU, a top 10 program in 2013-14, playing for them in the NCAA tournament, knocking out Northeastern with that buzzer-beating shot, so a successful college career of his own before he's now moved into the coaching ranks and a well-respected coach at that in his first year at the helm for Carver Bible College. They come in here 2-7, and seven, playing a lot of games early in this season. Carver, an odd program in that it's not NCAA, it's not NAIA. They actually are classified as NCCAA, the National Christian Collegiate Athletic Association. Not too many teams that play under that window, but they do play a lot of Division II and NAIA type opponents. They've already played Armstrong Atlantic State, a conference rival of CSU. They've already played Valdosta State, a team from just down the road. They played Fort Valley State on Tuesday night. They lost all of those games. They also played Shorter University from up in Rome. They've struggled this year against some of the better competition that they've played, but they've played close with some of those. They lost by just six to Armstrong, lost by six on Tuesday night against Fort Valley. Shorter and Valdosto put it on them pretty good, but this is a basketball team that comes in here. It's a very athletic bunch. It's not going to be a deep group. They've got just nine players in uniform for the game tonight, and a lot of guys scratched that didn't make the trip with them. So it's going to be a group that loves to push the basketball. They're long, they're athletic. They like to get up and down the floor and shoot early in the shot clock, but we'll see what kind of pace they can keep with just nine players. For Robert Moore, it's quite a luxury for him this season. He's got 14 guys on the active roster, 13 that are available tonight. Jamad Salim, who was scheduled to be the starting point guard for this CSU basketball team, broke his wrist or injure his wrist in the preseason, and he is out till right around Christmas time, so he is unavailable tonight. All the other 13 guys, though, are, and Robert Moore was talking with him yesterday. He said this is the first time in his head coaching career that he's had the ability to have this many guys that can play up and down the floor for him. He's got 9 or 10, 11 guys that he feels comfortable with going to, even can go all the way to 13 if need be, but he's looking to find that 9, 10, 11 group that will play the best for him. He has five players coming back, four that are available tonight. B.J. Battle, the leading returning scorer, a junior from out of Orlando, Florida, looking to gain a little more consistency this season. Also, Nick Turner, a guy that will come off the bench tonight. Jermaine Morgan, Dimitri Davis, also guys that will come off the bench tonight. Those are guys that they're looking to get good minutes out of that just won't be in the starting lineup. It's actually going to be a bunch of new faces in the starting lineup. There's some size in the post with Shane Hayward and D'Angelo Kirkland. Those two guys standing at 6'6 and 6'8. Brandon Dawson stands at 6'7. There's some Division I transfers, some junior college transfers, and then the very likable and big personality of R.J. Sessions, a local kid from out of Northside High School here in Columbus that is one of the few freshmen on this roster. As Robert Moore has gone with older, more experienced guys, even if they haven't had most of their experience here at Columbus State. We're looking forward to seeing what the 2013-2014 version of the Columbus State Cougar basketball team looks like, and we're just a matter of moments away. We're going to send things over in just a second to Brian Salito, our PA announcer, across the way. He'll give you your national anthem and your starting lineup. So we're glad you're with us wherever you may be here on Cougar Sports TV on this Thursday evening as we get set to kick off the 2013-2014 Cougar men's basketball season. Let's send it across the way to Brian Salito. Thank you. 
Ryan Salito delivering your starting lineups. And it's about time for basketball here in Columbus, Georgia. Carver College, Columbus State, and they'll line up like this. It'll be Kenny Funderburk along with Ty Harris and BJ Battle in the backcourt for CSU. Shane Hayward and Brandon Dawson, a pair of new faces along the front line for Robert Morris Cougars. For the Cougars of Carver Bible College tonight, they'll go with Emmanuel Griffin, Troy Swanson, and Julian Broughton in their backcourt along with Jonathan Robinson and Joseph Comer. They're two in the front court for the Cougars of Carver College that come out in their navy blue uniforms, the yellow writing and the white trim for CSU, the home whites, the navy blue numerals, the red lettering, and they are about ready for basketball here on Cougar Sports TV. Stephen Williams here with you alongside my partner tonight, Joey Rosari, as we get set for tip-off. 
here inside the Lumpkin Center. Basketball season, ready to tip off in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus State will be moving as you're looking at it. Right to left. Hayward to tip along with Robinson. The tip belongs to the Cougars in white of Columbus State. And Columbus State will have the opening possession of the 2013-2014 season. Ty Harris, the starting point guard for this team, a junior out of New Orleans, a transfer from Southern State Community College. Kenny Funderburk will tee up the first shot. It's well off the mark. Rebound tapped around and controlled back into the hands of Harris. And I believe they're going to say that ball did hit the rim and ask for the shot clock to be reset. It caromed awkwardly off the bottom of the backboard. So they'll put it back on 35. They'll trigger the inbounds from the sideline and see if she will have an opportunity at second chance points right away. Actually gonna put the shot clock at 34 as Dawson inbounds it. CSU 13 and 13 last year, looking to get on the right side of things here where they turn it over, headed the opposite way. Swanson one on one with battle, basket up, good, and he'll end to the free throw line. B.J. Battle committing the foul after CSU commits the turnover. Swanson takes it the opposite way, lays it in for the basket, and Carver in front with a chance to add on three the old-fashioned way. Swanson, a sophomore out of Conyers, Georgia. High arcing free throw falls through, and Carver in front by a tray. Expect these two to fly up and down the floor. They kick it out. Harris can't handle it cleanly. Working one-on-one. -on -one, drives to the rim. The blow-by and the finger roll for Ty Harris. Harris had great numbers in junior college as a point guard. They were really excited about what he brought to the table. Tonight, their first real look at it. Robinson on the block, the kick out up top. This is Broughton, his shot attempt blocked by Hayward. Loose on the floor, Comer comes up with it, blocked from behind, Funderburk, and now CSU will push. No numbers though, battle will try from the corner anyway, back rim, Hayward the offensive board. Goes back up, through the contact, hit the side of the glass. Carver have been a team that's given up offensive rebounds this season, so expect to see CSU crashing the glass trying to earn second chance opportunities. They drop Comer down low. In the middle of a double team, had the shot tipped again and battle controls. Harris will push it the other way, steps in between two defenders and before the pass, they'll call the foul against Broughton of Carver Bible. Gonna reset the shot clock. 18-14 showing, 3-2, Carver in front. Funderburk to the rim with the left hand, finishes it off. Kenny Funderburk, they like the potential of the scoring ability of the junior out of Charlotte. Transferred here from Aiken Tech. Played a couple of years there, sat out last year getting his grades in order. Comer posting up again, kicks it out. From the corner, it's a three, it rolls out. The attempt was not there for Griffin, and we've got a foul underneath on a loose ball. They're gonna say Shane Hayward commits his first foul. See how the foul situations go. They've changed the rules up a little bit this year. Made it a little more ticky-tack, as people would refer to it, trying to clean the game up. Robinson loose underneath, and Broughton finds him for an easy layup. Got another shot clock issue there. So again, it's first game for the scorer's table too. They've got to work things out as well. Opening night for this yeah. Columbus State men's team. I think we got ourselves a bit of an interesting game here with the shot clock. Two and a half minutes gone by, 5-4. Carver in front by a point. Funderburk driving right. They're gonna wipe the basket off on the step back. The foul was called before that. The foul goes against Julian Broughton. And the junior out of Marietta already in a bit of foul trouble. Wants two already. 
Funderburk off the inbounds, off the back rim. Long rebound in the hands of B.J. Battle. Pass down low, deflected, and a steal headed the opposite direction for Carver Bible. This is Broughton with it. Wide open on the wing. Swanson will try a three. That one's not even close. Long rebound, ricochets out to Broughton on the left wing. Shot clock won't reset. Comer again, quickly double teamed. They'll give a try that time for Griffin. He's long on it, and Harris rips it, and he wants to run. Goes right with it to battle. He'll pull from 17 feet. That one's off the mark as well, so the shooting number's not good early. Comer, the post player, is going to try to go coast to coast. Dishes it off, Broughton, the up and under, has it swatted away by the left hand of Hayward, who's got a couple. Not in Hayward's house tonight. Shane Hayward, a long player down the post. Doesn't carry a ton of weight, stands 6'6", 205, but an imposing presence in the center. He's taller than anybody on the roster right now for Carver Bible. Robinson trying to go underneath to Comer, and we've got a kickball. I believe off the leg of Brandon Dawson, so it'll stay underneath the Carver Bible basket. 22 on the shot clock, 16.30 showing on the game clock. 5-4 early on, Carver Bible in front. Oh, no one home for that pass from Broughton. Battle will go get it on the opposite end and the layup with the right hand. B.J. Battle may not get an easier two points at any point this season as Broughton that time threw the pass to the official who's wearing the wrong uniform. 6-5, Columbus stay back in front by a point. This is Broughton again working on Dawson. They kick to the corner. Open three from the left side is off the rim. Battle headed the other way with numbers. Funderburg driving on Broughton who has to let him go. Foul trouble, doesn't allow Broughton to defend it and Funderburg has four. CSU, you see they want to get out and run with it. It's going to be a common theme of Columbus State basketball this season, men and women, high paced, high octane. The double team almost earns the steal. They get it off into the hands of Broughton though. He'll pull from just inside the three point line and Hayward high to grab it off the rim. This is Harris again going to the basket and Ty Harris doing what he wants around the rim right now. Four for the junior point guard, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Rolando Lamb not liking what he's seeing from his Carver Bible team, 15-18, showing on the clock here in Columbus, Georgia. CSU doubling up, Carver Bible, 10-5. the score here on Cougar Sports TV. Columbus State in front of Carver Bible. A quick 6-0 run for the Cougars and everything for them coming right around the rim early. You know, Steve, looking at these two teams, Columbus State appears to have the bigger players and right now it has played a key role. But one main factor that Carver Bible has is Joseph Comer. He has such a big body right there in the board and he just showed it right there. Yeah, Comer on the back side, no weights listed for the Carver Bible on their roster. But it's safe to say he's the heaviest player on the floor <laughs> and used his size that time for the offensive board and the stick back, his first two points. He had a big night last year when these two teams met in an exhibition game. Funderburk with the float of the right hand. Kenny Funderburk having a nice start to his CSU career with six early ones. These two met in an exhibition game last season on this floor. It was 100 to 72. Columbus State winning that one, running away with it by 28 as Battle just about comes away with the deflection. They dish to the corner, does Carver Bible. The first shot not there, second not there, the third one not there for Robinson. The fourth attempt at the basket is swatted away, but a foul coming up against BJ Battle. For BJ, that's his second. Carver right now has to be able to make the shots where they count, and right now they haven't been able to do that. 
12-7 our score. We've got our first media timeout. Get used to hearing that. A lot more media timeouts happening this season. 12-7 CSU in front of Carver Bible College here on Cougar Sports TV. Out of the timeout, Jonathan Robinson, the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia for Carver Bible, headed to the free throw line. Subs are all the way around for CSU, four of them into the game. Nick Turner making his debut of his senior season, the senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, as Robinson knocks down the first. RJ Sessions, the freshman from Northside High School here in Columbus, on the floor for the first time. Jermaine Morgan, a junior forward from right here in Columbus out there along with D'Angelo Kirkland, a junior out of Pensacola, Florida, and it's Kirkland that goes high for that rebound. Columbus State by four early stages of the regular season opener here inside the Lumpkin Center in Columbus, Georgia. Kenny Funderburk, the only one that stayed on the floor in the starting lineup for CSU. This is Kirkland who drives to the rim, driving right, falling right, and kisses it off the glass. D'Angelo Kirkland with his first two of his career at CSU. They go underneath on the backside, Broughton wide open, and he gets the easy lay-in. So a lot of stuff on both sides right at the front of the rim. Nick Turner in running the point in this situation as Funderburk got around the first defender. Tough shot, came away with an air ball. and goes off the fingertips of Jermaine Morgan and out of bounds. And CSU will give it back. Funderburk will check out. Dimitri Davis in. On the other side for Carver, Christopher Datcher into the game. Devontae Bagley is also out there for Carver as well. Nearly seven minutes gone by in the regular season here for Columbus State on this Thursday evening. 14 to 10 they lead. Working around the outside, Swanson with it, gives it off to Bagley, and Swanson will get it back. Comer, a touch on the right side. He's touched on the right every time. He goes to the center, draws the double team, wide open, Bratton in the corner, nothing but the bottom of the net. The creation that time by Comer, drew the double team, found the open man, and it's a one-point game, 14-13. This is the second five on the floor for CSU. R.J. Sessions' first attempt is long, rebound tapped into the hands and controlled by Bagley. The Carvers weathered the early storm of CSU and a chance to edge back out in front with a basket here. Left wing, long two that time for Swanson. Again, not close. He's missed long a couple of times tonight and very long at that. This is Turner with it. Kirkland thought about it for a second, decides to kick it back out, and they'll run a set piece. Turner will drive, has it taken away from him, and on the sideline was Bagley. Turner had his pocket picked, but Bagley couldn't keep himself in bounds before it was headed back the opposite way, and we've got another media timeout on the floor. 11.57 showing on the clock here in the Lumpkin Center. 14-13, Columbus State in front by a point.
Stephen Williams, Joey Arzari back here with you. Court sign in Columbus, Georgia, 14-13. Columbus stayed in front by a point, eight minutes gone by. Sessions in the lane for CSU, kicks it out. Carver trying to add a little pressure on the defensive side. Wild attempt by Dimitri Davis, doesn't go. And the last touch by Kirkland for CSU. And it's back into the hands of the Cougars in Navy. Columbus State has never lost to Carver Bible in regular season action. 6-0 all time against the team out of Atlanta. Last time they met in the regular season was back in 2010. It was an 84-62 win on this floor for CSU. Broughton, a three from straight on, front rim, rebound to Sessions. They look for the alley-oop, it wasn't there. The pass from Turner, Dimitri Davis looked like he was starting to go and Turner thought he won and the pass sails right out of bounds. Again, it's a feeling out process. This is game number one. Again, Columbus State did play an exhibition but that was two weeks ago tomorrow as that one uh, was a little too low. Caught the midsection, <laughs> I believe, that time of Datcher. Comer spins baseline, kicks to the corner, driving to the rim is Swanson, finds Broughton in front of the CSU bench. That one falls off. So a little rust from CSU early. You heard Robert Moore talk about that in pregame. He said tonight was about shaking off the rust and finding a combination of five that works well together. He's got a lot of players that have ability. It's about finding which five goes best for him on the floor as Jermaine Morgan called for steps and another CSU turnover. That's their fourth of the night. Sub coming in for Carver, Zach Tab, a freshman out of Mobile, Alabama. Checking in, looks like he'll play the point guard position for Carver Bible. 14-13, still stuck on this one point score here. First half of action from the Lumpkin Center. Underneath, this is Comer, a high arcer, didn't catch rim. Kirkland bothered the shot and CSU tries to push with it. Turner turns it over though at the top of the key. On the other side, coast to coast for the lay-in is Devontae Bagley. So CSU sloppy early and that turns into points off turnovers for Carver Bible. Five turnovers for CSU, five points off turnovers for Carver Bible. Kirkland, a tough turnaround, front rim. Morgan tapped it to himself, the follow off the glass and in. This Carver team has been susceptible to giving up offensive rebounds. They've given up at least 16 of them in seven games this season. They gave up 25 on Tuesday night to Fort Valley State, which turned into 22 second chance points as we get a foul call on Nick Turner. That's his first, fourth against the Cougars to this point. Subs checking in for CSU. First look at Derek Spear, a six foot, 275 pound junior out of Atlanta, wearing number 12 and a brand new white headband. And Ty Harris, the starting point guard, checks back in for CSU as D'Angelo Kirkland called for the body bump. Going back to the whole rebounding aspect for Carver, at, rebounds will will kill you in the game of basketball. If you can't rebound effectively, you know, you're not gonna be able to turn over the ball. You're not gonna be able to score in the paint when you need to. And Carver needs to find a way to step that up. Another foul coming up against CSU. That'll be its third of this possession. As this one will go against Derek Spear. CSU has got the number of bodies it needs to be able to withstand foul trouble. But it's getting close now to free throws. Carver Bible is going to be in the bonus for the final 9-24 of this one as that was foul number six against CSU. Tough jumper way off to the left. It's been an ugly shooting night so far for Carver Bible. That one out of the hands of Datcher. Almost turned over underneath. Good look though from Dimitri Davis and it's Jermaine Morgan with the two-handed flush. Carver so far has just let easy points slip by. Jermaine Morgan with two the emphatic way. 18-15, Columbus State by three. Spear defending up top against Bagley. Davis switches out on him. Comer gets a touch at the back. Finds Broughton right in front of Robert Moore. Long rebound, comes back to Broughton. 
He'll try another one, this time a high arcing floater. That one falls off. The two CSU players can't corral it, and it'll stay again in the hands of Carver Bible. As Funderburk and Hayward step back onto the floor for CSU, it's Davis and Kirkland that step off. And for Carver, Jamil Saka, a freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, along with Troy Swanson, who started the game, back to the floor. Joe Comer will sit down, as will Julian Broughton. 18-15, well, eight and a half minutes showing here in the first half. Carver Bible hanging around early. It's been a bit sloppy for CSU. Carver hasn't shot it well, but they're taking care of the basketball for the most part. And now they're headed to the free throw line as Jermaine Morgan was calling for his first foul. That's the seventh now against CSU. And here's some dangerous territory. They're allowing a team that wants to just hang around all night to get free points without the clock moving. Devontae Bagley, a six foot two freshman out of Riverdale, Georgia, the one at the free throw line, shooting the one and one. At 15 points earlier this season in a loss against Valdosta State. A couple of games he didn't play in, but again tonight Carver Bible College needs everyone on the board. They have just nine players in uniform for Rolando Lamb. Second one not there, and that's an easy call from behind as Datcher goes over the back of Shane Hayward. The first on Datcher, the fourth against Carver Bible. That's actually rather the third. Wrong on the board here inside the Lumpkin Center. Columbus State by two with the basketball. Ty Harris, the point guard who's had some success, gives it up down low, but Hayward can't hold on to it. Off his hands and out of bounds, the sixth turnover against CSU. Columbus State right now working with so many players. Dimitri Davis is actually standing on the edge of the bench. No seat for him at the moment unless he wants to sit by the coaching staff. Driving to the rim and falling away was Saka. The shot was an air ball, but he's headed to the free throw line after another CSU foul. Second on Jermaine Morgan. So Brandon Dawson will get up off the bench and he'll likely check in for Morgan. High rainbow attempt that time from Saka. Morgan will sit, Brandon Dawson back in. The foul calls changed this year. They've decided to call it a little bit closer. They want to clean the game of bas basketball up. Want to up the scoring a little bit more. Want to take it from being football and turn it more into actual basketball as Saka misses a pair of free throws and an opportunity to tie the game up. Harris drives and dishes. Derek Spear from the right wing, missed to the right. Rebound down into the hands of Saka. This is Tab that wants to push. CSU back defensively though, withstands the rush. 18-16, a low-scoring first half for a game in which the two sides are really more high-octane offenses. Bagley to the rim, runs over Dawson, and they're going to send it the other way. Jamil Saka. Rather, Devontae Bagley, the one called for the foul. 18-16 our score, and we've got the under eight media timeouts. 7.24 showing on the clock. 18-16, Columbus State on top by two in a low scoring affair.
Carver Bible College struggling offensively. Six of 25, just 24% so far. One of nine from the three-point line. CSU shooting a good percentage. They're at 47% right now, nine of 19. The problem for the Cougars have been turnovers. They've turned it over six times. Got to take care of the basketball. Funderburk off to Harris as CSU's gone back to four of its five starters. RJ Sessions with the basketball, the lone non-starter as his jumper isn't go, doesn't go down. Rebound tipped around. Last touched by Funderburk and back into the hands of Carver Bible. It looks like signs of a team that hasn't played much this season, that's had two weeks in between games, that's trying to shake off some early season rust here in CSU. To the basket, and I believe we're gonna get another offensive foul. This time, Tab charged with the offensive foul, and it was Brandon Dawson for the second straight time that stepped in to draw the offensive foul. So Columbus State stuck on 18 for the moment. Struggling to figure out where the offense is gonna come from. Dawson on the pump fake, drives and dishes. They got Funderburk in the corner, can't get it to him. Dawson will get it back down to 12 on the shot clock. Dawson goes baseline, cut off. Out to Hayward, out of his area though. Down to seven as they get it in the hands of Harris. Harris is gonna step into one from straight on. Back iron, tapped around, controlled by Bagley and they'll run with it and Bagley fouled by Ty Harris. So right now, it's not exactly pretty for CSU offensively. In the early going, they were doing a lot of good things, driving at the rim, kind of gone away from that here lately, and it hasn't turned into anything good offensively. Ninth team foul, so the last time they'll shoot the one and one in this half, and if there's anything that's keeping CSU in the lead, that's a lack of free throw shooting from Carver Bible. Dawson after the miss in transition, high with the left, off the mark with a shot, but a foul will send Brandon Dawson to the free throw line. Brandon Dawson, a new face to the CSU team at the free throw line. A senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, transferred here after seasons played at Kennesaw State up in Kennesaw, Georgia. Division I talent, didn't like the amount of playing time that he was getting, so he comes down here to Columbus State where he hopes to play a big role in this, his only season for CSU as a senior. Columbus State with pressure in the backcourt forces Carver Bible to use a little clock. They've got a man in the corner, a shot attempt for Saka for three. Rebound grabbed and pulled down by Dawson. 20 to 16, CSU in front by four, Harris to the rim. The shot attempt was blocked. We'll see if they say he was in the process of shooting. Foul goes on Datcher, that's his second. They will say he was in the act of shooting, so Ty Harris, the junior college transfer, will go to the line for CSU, where he can't knock the free throw down. Comer and Broughton come back in for Carver Bible. Datcher sits down along with Tab. Kirkland back in for CSU in place of Dawson. 5.43 showing on the clock as Harris knocks the second one down. He has five early ones. Six for Kenny Funderburk. He's the game leader at the moment in a low scoring affair at 21 16. Double team against Bagley forces him to go in the wrong direction, and CSU thought it had a steal. What a foul called instead. Robert Moore marching down the sideline asking the official in the stripes. What happened there? D'Angelo Kirkland, the one charged with the foul. It's his second. So Kirkland, Battle, and Morgan all with two fouls for CSU. Double bonus time now for 
Carver Bible, so it's Devontae Bagley to the line for a pair. Carver Bible right now just four of nine from the free throw line. That will not get the job done. Now despite that, Columbus is giving them way too many opportunities to just rack up on free points. They gotta stop fouling and giving them those opportunities to just rack up. Kirkland, who had just checked back into the game, has to go sit with two fouls now. Brandon Dawson, who really had just stepped off the floor, now heads back out there. They got a foul coming up away from the ball. That'll go against Jamil Saka. I believe that's his third. So Jamil Saka in a bit of foul trouble early on. Eighth team foul against Carver Bible. So one and one time for Shane Hayward, the junior out of Charleston, South Carolina. Able to knock the free throw down and he is finally in the scorebook for his CSU career. Transferred here after two seasons, played at Middle Georgia College up in Cochrane, Georgia. Averaged 12 points, nine rebounds as a sophomore. Good shooting touch, a good looking stroke from the lefty. 23-18, CSU matching its largest lead at five and trying to pressure in the front court. Trapping and double teaming out of this amoeba style defense of Robert Moore. Comer with it, he's double teamed, spun through it anyway, threw up a wild one. CSU trying to push with it, Harris leading it the opposite way and he's called a foul against him on the defender, Troy Swanson. And I believe this is something we're gonna need to get used to. A lot of fouls, a lot of killing of the momentum and the flow of the game with the new foul rules. As the foul was the first on Swanson. As Ty Harris heads to the free throw line. Once again, he just split a pair and knocked the first one down. CSU with nine newcomers out of its 14 on the active roster. If you count the two that are redshirting, they actually have 11 newcomers out of 16 players. So it's a brand new bunch for the most part for Robert Moore. He does have some veterans that are still here. But so many new faces he's incorporating. They dish out for a three that rolls out, but the follow is there for Saka. 25-20, they pull back within five. This is Funderburk to the rim, too strong. Rebound tapped around, Saka will save it in. Under 4.30 to play in the first half now. The hesitation move, high off the rim. The follow dunk is there for Jamil Saka. Back to back, second chance baskets. So they pull Carver Bible back within three after being down seven. And Shane Hayward was on the in line as he takes a seat on the stairs underneath the basket. And it's another CSU turnover. Emmanuel Griffin back into the game for CBC. Devontae Bagley to the bench, but now all of a sudden with four minutes to go after CSU had built a little momentum and a seven point lead, it's Right back to one possession, a chance to tie, but CSU comes away with a steal. Sessions tries to go to the rim, can't knock down the layup, but he draws the foul and will head to the free throw line. Sessions did a really good job there following up uh, Thunderburk's turnover right there and drawing that foul. Swanson called for the foul, it's his second free throws coming up after the break, 3.56 to play here in the first half. Columbus State 25, Carver Bible 22.
25-22, Columbus State in front on top of Carver Bible College. Stephen Williams, Joey Rosari here with you inside the Lumpkin Center on Cougar Sports TV. RJ Sessions at the free throw line out of the timeout. Very short on that first attempt. Sessions, the freshman local kid here for CSU. The only freshman that's actually on the active roster. They have three. The other two, though, are also redshirting this year for CSU. Marcus Boyd and Richard Holden. So RJ, the only one that will play this year as a freshman for CSU. 26-22, four-point lead for Columbus State. Driving the fall away. That time off the glass, not there. Out of the hands of Swanson. Sessions. Falling back from 12 feet, knocks it down. RJ Sessions with his first field goal of the season. And it's right back out to a six point game. Seven, the largest lead. And that basket was the first field goal for CSU since the 9.07 mark. Took him almost six minutes as Nick Turner has the steal from Broughton. He'll try to go one on two and has it taken right away from him on the opposite side. Comer with the lay in. Comer didn't get back defensively, and he turns out to be the beneficiary of it as he's wide open for an easy basket in transition. Turner trying to give it up again. Almost had it taken away by Comer. Was able to regain control. Dawson trying to post up the much smaller Broughton. Pump fakes, goes around him, and he'll slam with two hands. Dawson pump faked on Broughton, who has two fouls. He can't pick up a third. Let him blow right by and stuffed it home. 30 to 24, 230 to go. Carver Bible hanging tough here through the first 17 and a half minutes. Important for them, though, to stay close down the stretch. Columbus's defensive pressure appears to be choking up Carver just a bit, slowing them down, making them move the ball. And so far, it's worked to their favor. Dawson has it, leading it the other way. It's a three on three. Sessions will pull up. That one too strong. Davis on the backside for the offensive rebound. He'll clear it back out to midcourt and a fresh 35. So CSU tried to get the points in transition. Instead, they'll get an opportunity at second chance. Harris with it as we hit under 150 to go. We've got an illegal screen coming up against CSU's Dimitri Davis underneath the basket, that's his first foul. Offensive foul, so no free throws coming up from it. Both teams well into the double bonus at this point with 145 showing in this first half. Opening night here from the Lumpkin Center. CSU, it's first game of the regular season, kicking off the year rather late compared to a lot of teams in NCAA Division II, but tonight is the start as Comer forced to give it up. Broughton's three, way short, caught nothing. CSU heading the other way. Harris gives it up, Davis to Sessions, pump fakes and dribbles it back out. Nice job that time by Griffin to stay on the floor. 70 seconds to play in this first 20 minutes. 30-24, CSU by six, seven the largest margin. Davis covered up by Robinson, drops it off. Sessions steps to the elbow and hits off the back rim. Harris keeps it alive, he'll go get it, track it down, drive to the rim, and I believe he moved his feet, but they're gonna say basket and the foul. A little bit of continuation there, but CSU will take it. Ty Harris having a nice night so far. The basket good, the foul against Carver Bible. Harris a chance with the free throw to get into double figures here in this first half as Robinson Picks up the, free, the foul, it's his first. Harris front rim and off the backboard. So he's stuck on nine. It's an eight point game though, the largest lead for CSU with 45 seconds showing at 32-24. 16 second differential between the two clocks here. CSU should get another possession barring an offensive rebound. They get it through a steal. Davis leading it the other way. Harris calling for it. They toss it up. Davis on the alley-oop. Wow. Great job by Columbus State executing on the turnover. 
That'll bring them to their feet and rile them up inside the Lumpkin Center. A 10 point game now, shot clock off, 11 seconds. A kick to the corner, Griffin hemmed up, double team now, looking for somewhere to go, clock down to three. Robinson hemmed up, will they get a shot off? No, good defensive possession on the final play there for CSU and they will go to the locker room at 34-24, a flurry down the stretch for CSU. Finished off emphatically by Dimitri Davis with the two-handed finish of the alley-oop off the pass by Ty Harris, who played a phenomenal first half for CSU. He's your game leader as they head to the locker room. The junior out of New Orleans has nine points. Kenny Funderburk got six early, and that's where he sits. Two for Shane Hayward and B.J. Battle. Two also for Dimitri Davis and D'Angelo Kirkland. Three for R.J. Sessions and Brandon Dawson with four for Columbus State. On the opposite side for Carver Bible, it's five for Devontae Bagley to lead the way along with Julian Broughton, who has five. Jamil Saka with four, Troy Swanson with three, Joseph Comer with four, and Jonathan Robinson has three of his own. 34-24, where we stand as they head to the locker rooms at half, the CSU dance team getting set to perform here in the Lumpkin Center along with some other things that'll be happening here inside the Lumpkin Center. They'll take an extended break here for halftime. We'll take the break with them when we come back. We'll give you some more of your first half numbers and look at what's happening around the Peach Belt Conference here on this Thursday evening. We take it to the locker rooms at half, 34-24. Columbus State here in front of Carver Bible College on opening night.
Stephen Williams, Joey Rosari back here with you on Cougar Sports TV as it's halftime, the regular season opener for the Columbus State men's basketball team here for the 2013-14 season. 34-24, the Cougars of Columbus State on top of the Cougars of Carver Bible College out of Atlanta, Georgia, here through 20 minutes of play. CSU shooting 46% through a half, 13 for 28. Missed all five of its three-point attempts so far, and they're 8 of 11 from the free throw line, so doing pretty good work from the charity stripe. On the opposite side, just 9 of 35 for Carver Bible from the field, 26%. They were 1 of 12 from beyond the arc, so struggled there, and they didn't shoot it well from the free throw line either. They were 5 of 10. CSU a slight edge on the glass. Carver Bible doing a good job on the offensive glass, though. They've got 10 offensive rebounds to just six for CSU. CSU, though, getting hurt in turnovers. They've turned it over nine times already in the game, and it's turned into seven of Carver Bible's 24 points coming off turnovers to this point. So CSU, it wasn't a pretty first half, but shaking off some rust, a lot of new players. They're trying to get into the fold, trying out different combinations, trying to figure out what combo worked. But it seemed like CSU was at its best and did a lot of good work as they drove to the rim, got a lot of good easy looks at the basket, and it seemed to spur them on forward. Although you look at it for both sides at this point, and both sides have missed a ton of opportunities, left a ton of chances on the court so far. Well, they need to limit the turnovers, because as you said before, that has really killed CSU. And foul trouble, foul trouble is, it, it's gonna add up. And as he said, they're feeling charitable. But right now, if either team wants to win, they have to execute. Execution is the key right here. They need to make the baskets when it counts. And later on in the game, well, in the first half, CSU seemed a lot more comfortable in their own skin. If they want to win, or at least pull away a better lead, they need to play that style of ball. They were giving Carver a run for their money with defense, allowing a healthy amount of pressure gaining the turnovers, and scoring off of those turnovers. CSU getting the season started tonight rather late when you compare to what everyone else has done. You look around the Peach Belt Conference, CSU the only team that did not play coming into tonight in men's basketball action. Georgia Southwestern has played five games already. They're 5-0. and UNC Pembroke is 5-0. and USC Aikens played five games. They're 4-1. and Landers played four, Armstrong's played four, so it's a late start to the year for Robert Moore's bunch, but they're looking to be one and oh when the night is over. Carver Bible will have possession of the basketball going right to left as you're looking at it on your screen. They're out there on the road navy uniforms, Cougars versus Cougars as CSU, and it's home white. The Cougars of Columbus State will go with Ty Harris, BJ Battle, Shane Hayward, Brandon Dawson and Kenny Funderburk, their original starting five as the opening basket of the second half belongs to Julian Broughton. So it'll pull CSU's lead back into single digits as Battle tries from the elbow, not there. Dawson trying to sky for the board, couldn't corral it with one arm, and it's back into the hands of Carver Bible. To the basket is Griffin off the glass. Four points in 30 seconds for Carver Bible, and they're right back in it within six. On the opposite end, Shane Hayward trying to put a little flow to this game for CSU as he has his first field goal. These two sides came in here as teams that want to push the tempo, want to run high, high octane, fast pace. That wasn't the case in the first half as Broughton misses. Comer uses his body and size to get the board, gives Broughton a chance from straight on, back rim. Comer again fights for a loose ball and Carver Bible gets the easy layup for Griffin. Yeah, definitely a very fast-paced game in the first half. I mean, I don't know if that's part of the first game jitters or maybe them just sniffing each other out, but both teams appear to have slowed it down just a step lower and are working the ball a bit better. Let's see if either team maintains throughout the rest of the game. DJ Battle cleaning up his own miss, puts CSU back up by eight at 38-30, the 10-point halftime lead was the largest for CSU in the game as the Cougars of Columbus ain't called for the foul. Kenny Funderburk hit with his first. CSU with a trio of players with two fouls. Kirkland, Morgan, and Battle, each two fouls in that first half. Three fouls for Jamil Saka of Carver Bible. He's the only one to hit three so far. 
Griffin drives, stops, gives it up. Broughton, a three, he misses another one. And a foul coming up from behind against CSU's Brandon Dawson. And that's his first. CSU committed 11 fouls in the first half. Already with two in the first minute and change here. Tough looking shot that time from Swanson. Long rebound into the corner. Funderburk can't keep it in bounds, and they'll reset the shot clock, and Carver Bible again will have another opportunity. So this is a Carver Bible team that didn't come in here known as a great rebounding bunch, but they're holding their own right now with CSU on the glass. Steal for CSU, Funderburk leading it the other way. He looks right, and it's too tall for Dawson and out of bounds. He got caught in the air and didn't exactly know where to go with it. Zach Tab in, Swanson will sit down over there for Rolando Lamb on the sideline. His first season at the helm there at Carver Bible College. Tab in at the point guard spot now as Griffin needs somewhere to give it up to. Broughton tries Comer who's been hemmed up all night long, has not had free space whatsoever. Big man trying to show his dribbles now as he goes to the left corner. The three point attempt is short from Tab and battle the board. Despite the dribbles, he still went nowhere, though. All the way on the opposite end, Ty Harris into double figures. He's the first one to reach that plateau as the junior now has 11. Said four layups, three free throws. They've come the easy way for Harris. Comer to the rim. He's fouled. Funderburg thought he got nothing but ball. But they're going to give the foul to Kenny. That'll be his second and the third against CSU and Joe Comer will head to the free throw line. Joseph Comer, the six foot five senior out of Decatur, Georgia. Averaging 11 points per game coming into the night tonight. He has three double doubles this season. He's been in double figures five times for them. Had 22 points and 10 rebounds in the matchup against CSU last year in that exhibition game, the win for Columbus State at 100 to 72. Comer a quiet night so far, and he just has six points. Harris comes off a screen, Battle will try a three from the left wing, and BJ Battle rings the trifecta for the first time this season for CSU. Very good shot. Uh, Finally, somebody was able to take initiative and take a shot that paid off in the end. They drop it down low, try to go for Comer. It goes through everybody over the baseline. And CSU gets the basketball back with its largest lead of the game at 11 as Brandon Dawson will come out. And for the first time, we'll get a chance to watch D'Angelo Kirkland and Shane Hayward play together on the floor at the same time. First time tonight we've seen that. We saw it at UAB as Funderburg tries one from downtown. That's not there. Rebound tipped around. Kirkland had his hands on it. Couldn't corral it though as Broughton heads it the other way. Goes one on three. Tries the shot anyway. It wasn't there and Kirkland has the rebound. CSU pushing the pace again. Harris, the crossover. Drops it off. Kirkland pump fakes. He'll drive to the rim. He goes up through the contact and they're going to hit him with the offensive foul. D'Angelo Kirko in the first Cougar to reach three fouls. And with 15.58 showing on the clock, we've got our first media timeout of half number two. 43-32 Columbus State out to its largest lead. Here on opening night, they lead Carver Bible by 11.
Columbus State continuing to shoot the basketball well, making four of their first seven here in the second half. Their number closing in on 50% for the game as they've run out to an 11 point lead with 15.58 to go and they'll go into their full court defense. A 1-3-1 look for Robert Moore out of the timeout. Expect him to trap when it gets near that mid-court stripe as they get it in the hands of Tab. As it's stolen away by Harris. Harris will go to the glass. The finger roll. The scoop is good. Ty Harris with 13 now. So they immediately go to the defensive switch. It turns into a turnover. On the opposite side, Robinson to the rim. Turns it over again. Another traveling call against Carver Bible. And CSU starting to wedge its way out in front. Jermaine Morgan will sub in in place of Shane Hayward. Dual subs for Carver Bible as Jamil Saka in along with Devontae Bagley. Griffin sits down for Carver Bible as does Robinson. 45-32, CSU in front by 13. Looking much better so far here in the second half. Battle from long distance. Was a little bit off to the right and D'Angelo Kirkland just picked up foul number four. Yeah, definitely a, a much better half so far for both teams right now, it appears. They're not playing anywhere near as sloppy as they were before. Kirkland hit with his fourth foul, so he'll sit down at the 15-24 mark. Dimitri Davis will come back onto the floor for CSU. 13-point game, though. Carver Bible, sloppy, turns it over. Battle works it out in transition. Harris lost it on the way up. It falls into the hands of Morgan. Tries to go off glass, too strong. Rebound tapped around. Good hustle by Dimitri Davis, and he'll slam it off of Broughton, and it'll go out of bounds. Dimitri Davis with the hustle play. He keeps the possession for CSU. Well, Dimitri Davis doing the little things for head coach Robert Moore. He talked about some of his guys that come off the bench. They may not be as talented as the starters in terms of pure basketball ability, but they are high energy guys, high effort guys, and guys that will get after it on both ends. Dimitri Davis showing it for you there on that last play. Five minutes gone by in the second half, 13 point margin. CSU led by 10 at the break. They've added three to that. Funderburg drives to the right, lost the dribble, and ends up on the side as they scramble to the floor for it. Harris kept it alive and got it back into CSU's hands. Dimitri Davis underneath fouled, and he'll head to the line. So again, CSU scrambling around. Good hustle plays individually for CSU, and it results in free throws as Jamil Saka picks up the foul for Carver Bible. That's his fourth. Dimitri, the highlight play of half number one, the emphatic alley-oop to close out the half. The redshirt junior from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, one of the five returning players for CSU this season, averaged about seven points a game last year. A guy that doesn't necessarily step out and shoot it all that well, but from about 12 feet and in, he's a tough matchup. Big wide body as the turnaround is short that time from Datcher. Rebound plucked out of the air by Funderburg. Funderburg drives baseline. He'll pull up all by himself. The shot missed left. Hustle play. BJ Battle got the rebound. Turns it over though. Into the hands of Comer. Opposite side. Bagley trying to go up and under. Has it blocked off the backboard. And CSU has numbers now. It's a three on two. Battle the no look. Funderburg the finish. Great job on the fast break by CSU off of that rejection <laughs> in their territory. CSU getting out and running with it now and running away with the ball game, a 16 point edge, 48-32. Battle steps into the passing lane, another turnover. CSU running, they toss it up, Funderburk can't finish off the alley-oop. The pass is a little out of position for him and Funderburk couldn't finish it off. It puts smiles on the face of everybody on the CSU side. And as Carver Bible gets it into the front court, Rolando Lamb takes a 30 second timeout. 13.36 to play, 48-32. Columbus State out in front by 16.
Stephen Williams, Joey Rosari back here with you inside the Lumpkin Center on Cougar Sports TV. Opening night for the Columbus State men as they're on top by 16 early here in the second half over Carver Bible College. Going into the timeout, Ty Harris and Kenny Funderburg, you could see the smiles on their faces from where me and Steven are sitting. And to see two players on the same team smiling like that is a really good sign. It shows they're comfortable and they're out there having fun. Nick Turner absorbing the hit that time underneath as he steps into the lane, draws the charge. The third time CSU has drawn one of those tonight as the foul goes against Troy Swanson. It's his third. And as CSU with a lot of bodies can afford foul trouble, foul trouble not in the cards for Carver Bible. Just nine players in uniform tonight so they can ill afford to have guys be taken off the floor because of it. Turner gets a look from the left corner for three. Rebound tapped out by Morgan, controlled by Spear. And Robert Moore instructing his point guard, Derek Spear, on the offense. Spear off a screen, he'll try it for himself, and he buries it. Derek Spear in the scoring column tonight now. Second three-pointer of the game for CSU, and it's now a 19-point game, and Columbus State pulling away. CSU defensive pressure forces another steal. Spear with this one. The bounce pass for Sessions, who has his layup blocked. Bagley got all over it, and now Carver Bible on the counter. Missed the layup on the opposite end. CSU with a run out now. Sessions with the two-handed slam. It didn't work at first for RJ, but the little guy gets up and finishes it in transition on a second attempt. 21 point game and CSU with another steal. Sessions off to Spear, Spear to Morgan, another dunk. And Carver Bible needs to stop things right here. CSU running away, trying to hide here in the second half as Rolando Lamb ponders over what's going wrong for his Cougars of Carver Bible, 55. 32, Columbus State in front by 23 points with 11.58 to go. And here in the last five minutes or so, it's been all about turnovers for Columbus State. Oh yeah, Columbus State has been able to get the fast break and capitalize on it, not every time, but they've been able to capitalize on those turnovers. Columbus State now has forced 15 turnovers on Carver Bible after the Cougars of Carver Bible went to the half with just six. They've turned it over nine times in eight minutes here in the second half, and it's turned into 13 points for Columbus State off turnovers. They're doing a great job of finishing it off and quite a flurry of plays they've had just there. You remember out of the last timeout, Columbus State went to more of a full court defense, changed to a 1-3-1 pressing style look, and that forced a couple of turnovers immediately, and Carver Bible not doing a good job taking care of the basketball at the moment. Carver is, very, is definitely hurting. They're smaller in numbers, and they just got cut short another man by Jamal Saka, who's been facing foul troubles. And you can tell they look very frustrated, and Columbus State is capitalizing on that. Driving just inside the elbow, the jump shot not there. Comer grabs the offensive board and just bullies his way to the rim. Joe Comer with eight. It's that big body. When you have a big body like that, you can just bulldoze your way into that kind of a scoring situation. And he's able to do it, and you can tell he's able to do it very well. Traveling call against Derek Spear, and we've reached the under 12 media timeout. 11.39 showing on the clock here in Columbus, Georgia on opening night, 2013. 55-34, Columbus State by 21.
Columbus State basketball heading out on the road on Saturday. They'll head to West Georgia up in Carrollton. The women will play at two o'clock. The men will play at four. Jonathan Norton's women are 2-0 after a 68-65 three-point win over Shorter on Monday night. That's not all that's happening this weekend though in Columbus State Athletics. Saturday morning in Spokane, Washington, the Columbus State Lady Cougar cross country team will run in the NCAA championship. And then tomorrow at noon from Florence, South Carolina, Columbus State Volleyball in the Peach Belt Conference Tournament will take on Montevallo, so best of luck to the volleyball girls over in South Carolina as they look to win a Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship in year number one. Alley-oop attempt on the offensive end for CSU and it was Chris Datcher who was boxing out Jermaine Morgan. That's legal on a rebound, not on an alley-oop attempt and he gets hit with the foul. For Datcher, that's his third. That was the third of the half against Carver Bible, five against CSU so far in the second 20 minutes. Morgan high to grab that inbounds pass. Carver making them work off the inbounds. 11.15 to go in this ball game. 21 point game as Turner just about turned it over and then they're gonna hit him with a double dribble. Thought that he had lost possession and then regained it so he tried to dribble again. The officials though said nope, never lost it. Losing possession that time was Comer of Carver Bible, but CSU couldn't keep it in play. So it'll stay on this end for Carver Bible who needs answers right now. CSU outscoring them 21 to 10 out of the locker room as that almost was a phenomenal play off the inbounds for Saka who was soaring through the air to try to finish off the alley-oop. Got bumped underneath by CSU. And went flying to the floor. Couldn't finish it off, but he'll earn two free throws as Dimitri Davis hit with his second foul. Saka puts it way up in the air on the free throw attempts. Good thing we play in a big arena. <laughs> That went well short off the front rim. It ricochets right into Saka's hands though. He goes high off the glass that time. And he puts one down. So he gets three points on the play. Spear running the offense. Gets away with a push off there of Broughton who's looking for the foul. But Derek Spear with the lay in and he has five. Spear's an interesting case. He started as the point guard against UAB two weeks ago as they find Saka underneath again. He missed that time and the rebound battled for, loose still. They're falling on the floor, bodies everywhere. Saka gets it again and he's gonna, they're gonna say he was fouled. Trying to drive to the basket by RJ Sessions. It'll be RJ's first. That's seven now on CSU. So they're gonna head to the line for the one and one. But back to Derek Spear, he started at point guard was talking to Robert Moore about that yesterday and he said he had three really good days of practice leading up to the UAB game and so he gave him the start. Jamad Salim, his starting point guard out with a wrist injury. So he gave Derek Spear the opportunity. Hadn't practiced all that well since that moment as Saka knocks down the free throw. And Ty Harris has kind of won the job away from him but they feel comfortable allowing Spear to play and he's played some good minutes tonight. With that last foul, Carver Bible has gained the bonus in this half. 19 point game though still. Carver's gonna need to do it in bigger chunks than one at a time as we close in on the midway point here in the second half. Yeah, Carver Bible is going to have to do a better job of keeping possession if they wanna sh uh, shorten up the numbers. Sessions misses on the three. Broughton leading it the other way. Has his attempt blocked. A run out near midcourt. Comer grabs it, goes behind the back. Tries to go nifty with the no look. Saka tracks it down. Hangs in the air and the shot goes down. Jamil Saka looking good here in the second half. Turner on the other end with the run out. Left hand layup, good. CSU looking to make it happen that quickly. And they've got a line change coming up as five new ones will check in at the next whistle. Nick Turner picked up his first two of the game with that last shot. 
Comer to the rim with the left hand. Lays it in and pulls it back to 17 at 59-42. Comer into double figures, he has 10. Spear throwing it one way for Nick Turner, but Turner running the other way as CSU will bring it starting five back to the floor. Funderburk, battle. Harris, Hayward, and Dawson back onto the floor in white for CSU. Comer comes out as Bagley steps back on for Carver Bible. So far this half, Comer appears to be showing a much bigger presence, something Columbus State was able to shut down in the last half. Saka's three, off to the right, Harris the rebound, and CSU's not gonna stop. They're gonna keep running with it. Funderburg in transition, the pull up, rolls off on the backside, rebound pulled down by Datcher. Swanson drives on Harris, Harris good D, moving the feet. Hems him up at the free throw line. Broughton on Funderburg. Funderburg blocked it from behind off the backboard. He can't save it inbounds though, so it'll stay here with Carver Bible at 8.38 to go. Griffin back onto the floor for CBC. It looks like Broughton is gonna come out. Broughton a little slow heading over to the bench, so they're gonna wait till he gets there before they let them inbounds it. On the right side, 8.35 to play, 17 point game. CSU looking for a victory in game number one this season, another turnover, they toss it out. Funderburk with another finish. Put Funderburk in double figures, he has 10. CSU right now with two players in double figures, Funderburk with 10, Harris with 13. Bagley, the pass Way to over. no one. Way over. And we've got another timeout coming up for Carver Bible. 8.08 to play here in the opening game of the season. CSU still up by 19, 61, 42 on Cougar Sports TV. Sixty-one forty-two. Stephen Williams and Joe Irizarry back here with you on Cougar Sports TV. Columbus State up by 19 with eight minutes to play as Shane Hayward gets a touchdown low, hit the underside of the rim though. Datcher has it back for the Cougars in Navy. The alley-oop attempt for Saka way too high and ends up in the arms of the CSU dance team who wasn't looking for it and now we've got another timeout. This one a media timeout. 7.50 to go. 61-42, Columbus State still in front. Seven fifty remaining here in this second half. Columbus State by 19. Joe Comer into double figures for Carver Bible. Also has 10 rebounds, so 10 points, 10 boards. Another double-double for Joe Comer for Carver Bible. That's his fourth of the year. Dawson from the elbow. Has it fall off. Rebound to the hands of Funderburk. Finds battle in the corner, and BJ has his second of the night and put him in double figures. He's got 10. 
22 point lead now. BJ the third Cougar to reach double figures as CSU gets hit with a foul underneath. And it'll be back to the free throw line for Carver Bible as Funderburk hit with that one. And that'll be his third, all of them coming here in the second half. Eight fouls against CSU in the half, so one and one here for Troy Swanson. Has just three points in the game, all in the second half. Rattles that one home though. Farber Bible's gotten to the free throw line quite often. A little too often. Columbus State's shot just two of them here in the second half. These are free throws seven and eight of the second half so far for Carver Bible, and both of them go through for Swanson. Man down, Saka goes to the floor for Carver Bible, and in transition, CSU forcing the action, draws the foul. Court Monster got Saka there. Swanson hit with a foul, it's his fourth. He joins Saka as Carver Bible players with four fouls. Robert Moore told us in the pregame that his team was going, to pre was going to press the issue offensively because of the new foul rules. They're gonna drive, drive, drive some more because anytime somebody touches you, it turns into a foul and potential free throws as they say Funderburk was the last one to touch that one as it flew out of bounds. Yeah, CSU has been able to drive, but they haven't been able to draw those fouls that they need to. This is Tab pulling up from 18 feet, not there. Nobody boxed out Swanson, and he missed the easy one. Harris on the opposite side, driving. Dishes it off underneath. That's Hayward with it. Are they going to say jump ball or an on the arm? I believe they're going to say jump ball. Tied up underneath that time. Possession arrow does favor CSU, so they'll keep it. 6.45 on the game clock, 26 on the shot clock. 64-44 the score. Funderburk off the inbounds, caught the wrong side of the net. Opposite way, this is Swanson going one-on-one -on -one with battle. The floater up over Funderburk goes down, so Swanson makes up for the earlier miss. Harris quickly the other way, Funderburg, he'll try his opportunity, basket, plus one. Great job making that shot after the foul. Funderburg now with 12 points, Harris the assist, he has 13 points and five, or rather three assists to go along with five rebounds as Jamil Saka has just fouled out of the game, that's his fifth. So they'll have to sub him out of the game. He's the first one to be disqualified from the contest. Saka will finish though with 10 points. So he made his impact even in limited minutes. 66-46, it's a 20 point game. That's very unfortunate for Saka that he was able to make that impact with those four fouls. Had he not had that much foul trouble, he would have been maybe a bigger presence for Carver and could have made a bigger impact for them right now but that lowers their bench and that could end up hurting Carver. Comer got the easy one after they beat CSU's defense down the floor. Comer now has 12 to go along with his 10 rebounds. Harris almost had it taken away from him by Bagley as CSU slows it up with six minutes to go, leading by 19. Hasn't been pretty for CSU, but effective. Hayward backing his man down, goes up and under with the left hand. Shane Hayward now with six. Great job working under that net. Hayward was able to turn something out of nothing, really. Flying to the rim, Bagley can't finish the flush over top of Hayward. CSU will take the miss the other way. Harris drops it off, Funderburk will finish it off. Add another assist to Ty Harris's night. Kenny Funderburk now with 15. CSU almost another turnover, but over aggressive was Ty Harris and he'll commit the foul. For Ty, that's his second. Ty having a nice debut tonight for CSU, as is Kenny Funderburk. That was the ninth foul against CSU. So to the line is Troy Swanson. Dawson and Hayward will sit for Columbus State, it's Morgan and Kirkland that come back in. Ty Harris has done a really good job of patrolling his offense as the guard for Columbus State. C 
71-49. Swanson with a second one upcoming. Gets it down to a 21 point game, but they need defensive stops. That's what it comes down to right now for Carver Bible. It's not about the offensive end. They've got to get stops on this side of the court. Kirkland out there with it. His time has been limited tonight due to foul trouble. He's playing with four right now. They try to get him the basketball and he just loses it off his leg. Just didn't concentrate, dropped it right off his knee. So with five minutes exactly, Kenny Funderburk will come out. We'll see if we see him tonight. His night may be done. And we get our first look at Jay Manning, a six foot four, 180 pound sophomore out of Peachtree City, Georgia. A transfer from Georgia Regents University, Augusta, formerly known as Augusta State. Change of the name this year as the CSU commits another foul, tripping that time. Harris called for his third foul. Manning, a guy that wasn't happy with his playing time there in Augusta. With longtime head coach, Dip Mitras. Free throw was up and good for Bagley. He's the one at the line. He had nine newcomers that'll play this season for CSU. All but one of those coming out of the transfer ranks, whether it was junior college, another four-year institution, or even sitting out and not playing last year. There's some of those as well. Manning will try a three, back rim and out. Back the other way, it's still a 19 point game though. Bagley's three from the corner is short. Rebound for Kirkland. Shots just have not been falling from outside for Carver Bible. Four and a half to play now, 71-52 as Robert Moore is about to send his final sub off the bench into the game. BJ from the left wing off the rim. Rebound for Bagley, he's gonna try to go coast to coast by himself and he lost it. Couldn't save it inbounds, a turnover in transition. And Robert Moore will finish off his bench. Chevy Keaton, a junior out of Albany, Georgia, in for the first time. RJ Sessions also back into the game. Ty Harris and BJ Battle sit down. Both of those guys in double figures tonight. Harris has 13, BJ Battle with 10. Funderburk, Battle, and Harris, the trio in double figures right now for Columbus State. Sessions will try a line drive three. It doesn't go. And for the second time tonight, Jermaine Morgan keeps an offensive possession alive by tipping the rebound out long. Underrated aspect of offensive rebounding. They throw the alley-oop up for Kirkland, and it would have gone down had Kirkland not been fouled on the play by Bagley. Good look that time by the junior point guard. Devontae Bagley hit for the foul, that's his second. And we've got our final media timeout of the night. 3.47 to go, 71-52. Columbus State appears to be cruising to a victory on opening night. Stephen Williams, Joey Arizari here with you on Cougar Sports TV. D'Angelo Kirkland at the free throw line coming out of the timeout, 71-52 as Kirkland will have two free throws coming up. Those of you not familiar with all these media timeouts we're taking, it's new to the Peach Belt Conference this season. They're going to the original NCAA structure of media timeouts. Last year we took timeouts and the first whistle under 12 and under six of each half as Kirkland rattles the second one home. 
This year, they're changing it up and adopting the way most of NCAA does it. First whistles under 16, 12, 8, and 4. So we added two media timeouts per half as CSU gets the turnover. Manning leaves it off for Kirkland, who steps in between defenders and the big man, saying, I can handle the basketball a little bit. Again, CSU able to work off of that fast break on the turnover. On the opposite side, Swanson drives through everybody and lays it in. Swanson now in double figures. He has 11. Keaton drops it off. Jermaine Morgan goes off glass and drops it in. Chevy Keaton, not a guy that's going to score very much, but he does look to distribute at that point guard spot, and he does that really well. The fall away for Swanson touches nothing but nylon. So Swanson stacking up points here late. He's got 13. Jermaine up to eight now. He could be the fourth Columbus State player to hit double figures with one more basket. Swanson is starting to take some initiative for Carver, which is what they need. They need somebody to step in and say, you know what, I need to try to make some points and help my team lower this lead down. Manning had it stripped away. Swanson hangs in the air, and he gets another basket to go down. Swanson went to halftime with just three. They throw it up. Kirkland will get the easy finish. Keaton with an, another assist is D'Angelo Kirkland, getting a lot of points here down the stretch, has seven. Swanson tries to stay hot, doesn't get it. Robinson's follow not there as he hits the floor. Keaton drops it for Sessions for Morgan. Another alley-oop. Two minutes on the clock, and CSU putting it away, 80-58. That alley -oop was able to put Morgan into double figures just now. Jermaine now with 10, and almost a steal as he took that one somewhere off the facial area. As the jump shot was missed, Keaton the rebound, and I believe Robert Moore telling his team, hey, let's back off, let's slow it down. Good decision, Columbus State should probably waste a little bit of time and that'll lower Carver's chances of dimming this lead down. Sessions has it knocked away from him that time by Griffin. So it'll send it back the other way. That turnover was number 19 on CSU and the three goes down. Griffin creates the turnover and knocks the three down. He has seven all here in the second half and it's back to 19 with 70 seconds showing on the clock. And now a foul coming from behind that does nothing but delay the final part of this game. 7th foul against Carver Bible as Chevy Keaton will have a chance to get into the scoring column. Looking down at my score sheets, the only ones that hasn't scored yet is Keaton and Jay Manning. Those are the last two to come off the bench for Robert Moore and Keaton has a chance to put himself in the scoring column here. He's got one and one. Keaton can't get the free throw, but Kirk on the offensive board. Spins, finds Keaton, who tried to drop it off for Morgan and hit a player, and the other way they go. This is Swanson again, adding to his fantastic second half. He has 17 for the game, 14 of those here in the final 20 minutes. It's a 17 point game now, as CSU will have to take at least one more shot. 19 second differential at the moment. Jermaine Morgan showing off the handles and Joe Comer, no quit in him, forces the five second call. So make it an even 21 turnovers now, not very even. It was an even number 20, now that was 21. Swanson just says, hey, come on, get on my back, let's go. Missed the shot, they battle for the rebound. It's tied up between Sessions and Robinson as things uh -oh. get a little testy. A bit of shoving going on right now and there's a good exchange of words. <laughs> Robinson and sessions. sessions. Yeah. Getting into it a little bit. Just 29 seconds showing left. Two of them will high five. Yeah. Just caught up in the action a little bit. Yeah. Sessions is a freshman so he's going to show a little bit of a hot temper right now. And they'll check him out of the game to make sure nothing else <laughs> happens in the final 29.9 seconds. It's 80 to 73. Yeah, the coaches have a few words for Sessions right now as he heads back to the bench. 
80-63 rather, as Broughton misses the three. Robinson on the backside gets the stick back, so Carver Bibles trimming the lead down a little bit, trying to make it a little more respectable down the stretch. The shot clock is off though. CSU doesn't have to take another shot, and Chevy Keaton looks pleased to just dribble the clock out. 80-65 will be your final score here from the Lumpkin Center tonight. The Cougars will go to 1-0 and on the season as they pull out a 15-point victory. Great start to the season, just what you want. First game win, that should really set the tone for these young guys. Not their best game, but I think that this will be a good building ground from them right now. 80-65, the finals. CSU, after a slow start to the game, leading just 34-24 at half, runs out 46 points over the final 20 minutes as the offense finally kicked it into high gear and ran things up there in that second half, and they did it a lot with points in transition, points off turnovers, and then got out and ran with it a lot and was able to add to its total as they pull out the 15-point victory here on opening night. Robert Moore will join us here shortly after he does his radio duties. But sitting down with us right now is Kenny Funderburk, the junior transfer from out of Charlotte, North Carolina. First time on this floor here, first official game for you. What'd you think? Uh, it was a great, real great experience, man. I mean, the crowd, the atmosphere, we had a real good fan support team. We got a lot of work to do, but we jailed together uh, tough times, and we're going to figure it out. It was a little slow for you all, especially offensively out of the gates. How much of it was you all just haven't been on the floor in a while in a real game setting? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we had about a week and a half off and just hard, tough practices. But, I mean, we, we gelling together. We're going to get it back and get it together, hopefully play more, get more shots up, hard working. You're one of nine guys that's playing with this team for the very first time. Has it been difficult trying to get into the system and gel everybody together? Uh, I mean, at first it was it was very tough, but I mean, we got a lot of good team chemistry, so we're really coming together. Look at it tonight, kind of assess what things need to get better before Saturday. Uh, defense, rebounding. Definitely got to pick it up on defense and rebound more and just knock down free throws and make shots. 15 points for you, a pretty good, successful debut. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kenny Funderburnt, the junior transfer from Charlotte, North Carolina. As we wrap things up here from the Lumpkin Center in Columbus, Georgia. Successful debut for him as he puts in 15, leads the way for Columbus State in scoring. He was one of four Columbus State players in double figures. He had 15. Ty Harris finishes with 13 and really efficiently doing so. 13 points, five of six shooting, and he was three of five from the free throw line. He also added five rebounds and four assists, so you know Robert Moore will be pleased with that. B.J. Battle and Jermaine Morgan each finished with 10 points on the night, seven for D'Angelo Kirkland, and six for Shane Hayward as they also put in other points. The rest of them scattered across the board for CSU. On the opposite side for Carver Bible, 17 for Troy Swanson, 12 points, 10 rebounds for Joseph Comer as he ends up with a double-double. That's his fourth of the season. 10 points for Jamil Saka. He only got to play 11 minutes because of foul trouble. He fouled out but made those 11 minutes count as he finishes with 10 points. Carver Bible, ends up shooting just 32% for the night. You knew they were going to shoot early and often, and they did so tonight, just did not shoot with a lot of proficiency. And then you look down at the big number, 2 of 21 from the three-point line. You shoot 9.5% from the three-point line a game. You're going to struggle to win many ball games. On the opposite side, CSU, 51% from the field. And if you take out the three-point shooting for them, they actually shot 60% as they were 3 of 15 from the three-point line. So neither team shot the ball very proficiently here in game number one, which sometimes is to be expected with the way things go. But they got to the free throw line, shot 65%, a number you'd like to see them improve on. But in the end, they did enough to go and pick up the victory tonight. And really, when it came down to it, they amped up the intensity in the second half, added turnovers to the mix, and it really got the offense going with extra points in transition. Oh, yeah, and that definitely helped CSU out. Now, despite a fairly sloppy-looking game, their numbers look fairly decent. I mean, this is just the first game, so as I said before, this could be a great building ground. And uh, Ty Harris did a very good job, as I said before, of taking initiative at the point position. And CSU in the second half really seemed to fit in and 
you know, realized where they stood and what they needed to do. They got the job done. They were able to make their, um, their, their, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. They were able to make the, the opponent, the opponent, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were able to adapt and do whatever they needed to in order to score. And, you know, they brushed off that high octane intensity in the first half, and that seemed to have made them improve. The first of several games this season, a long season ahead of Robert Moore's bunch. They're back on Saturday, not here in this building. They'll be up in Carrollton, Georgia, a couple hours up the road as they'll take on West Georgia. It'll be the first road game of the season. That'll be the back half of a doubleheader with the women's team. Jonathan Norton's Lady Cougars, who are 2-0 and on the season, will put that unbeaten record on the line at 2 o'clock against West Georgia. At 4 o'clock, the men will follow with the second half of the doubleheader they do not come back home until the 29th that'll be next Friday they're here next Friday and Saturday Thanksgiving weekend for a Thanksgiving classic they'll play Voorhees next Friday afternoon at two o'clock we'll have that one for you here on Cougar Sports TV and then next Saturday West Georgia will make the return trip back to Columbus for a one o'clock tip from inside the Lumpkin Center so they will be back here very, very shortly. The women don't return to the Lumpkin Center and Cougar Sports TV until December 7th when they take on Selma University. That'll be a second game of a doubleheader in which the men will actually play first on that Saturday. So we've got plenty of basketball coming your way as we await Robert Moore coming down here for his final thoughts on game number one. Really, you look down at it. Good numbers across the board. The only numbers you'd like to shake off if you're Robert Moore, the 21 turnovers. But, hey, it's game one. You've got a lot of new players, a lot of guys trying to adjust to each other. And it, it's going to take a little bit for this team to try to figure each other out. Yeah, they just need to discover themselves. Because you've got a lot of guys who have transferred. You put them all in one team. They're going to be a little shaky. But once they get the hang of it, they're going to be able to fit very well together. And that's going to be the makings of a fairly dangerous team. Ty Harris, as we've talked about, a good night for him. 13 points to go along with five rebounds and four assists. Robert Moore told me yesterday, this is a guy that had great numbers in junior college, and we were really excited about getting him. Hadn't quite lived up to it so far in the practice. He, wasn't, he didn't look great when they played against UAB or some of the scrimmages that they played. Looked good tonight, though, and that's a guy that they're hoping can jump in and grab the reins of that point guard position and take over control of it as they move forward here, trying to fill in for Jamad Salim until he's able to come back around Christmas time as he will be back after a wrist injury as Robert Moore gets set to walk down here and finish us off, finished up with Scott Miller with his radio duties. 80-65, to 65, Robert Moore's bunch is 1-0 and on the season. Coach, it wasn't pretty, but, hey, a win's a win, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think our guys were just ready to play because it seemed like forever since we played a game. Uh, I like our transition as far as offense. Uh, I thought we did very well in defense. If you remember the first half, we held them to 25% from the field. Uh, I think we got a lot of things to work on, but being the first game, uh, I, I was excited and, and pleased with the guys and their effort. Chalk up that first half to being off for so long and a little rust early on? Oh, yeah. I, I thought we turned the ball over at bad times. Uh, you know, and the way they're calling now, we put in a new transition offense about two or three days ago, and I think our guys hadn't really got comfortable with it. So I think those kind of things caused us problems. But, uh, Stephen, I like the depth that we have, and I think we got a chance to be very good, especially on the defensive end. You know, we can just sit here and practice and work on shooting and get better in shooting. But we, I think I like this bunch right now. You made a change in the second half. You came out of that first media timeout, went 1-3-1 one, one on that press, and it seemed like all of a sudden a spark went off, something happened, and the game completely changed. Uh, and I, and I got to do a better job of that. I think I got great athletes over there, and I got to let them, you know, get loose and play a little bit. So I thought, you know, we was letting the game go back and forth. So we got to pick it up full court like we talked about doing this year and, and just let those guys use their athleticism to get to the rim and cause turnovers. And I think we did a good job of that tonight. We talked about Ty Harris when we talked yesterday, and you were saying he hadn't quite gotten to where you wanted him to be. It looked like tonight when he wanted to, he could score at will and he distributed the ball well. Oh, yeah. And when Ty turns it on and is, is focused on what we're trying to do, I think he's a pretty good player. Uh, the more games he plays, he's going to get more comfortable. And I think he's going to be an exciting player for fans and 
the community come out and watch because uh, Ty Harris is a good basketball player. You got less than 48 hours before you got to play again. How difficult is this quick turnaround? Oh, I, I think it's, it's it's difficult, but you got to understand if you're gonna win a Peach Belt title, you got to be able to play three games in a row, two games in three days, those kind of scenarios. And I just got to go in there and tell our guys, hey, this game is behind us. Let's get ready and start preparing for West Georgia, who has a very good team that plays in the Gulf South Conference, and we always had trouble playing them there. But we got to have the attitude that we're going in there to win the basketball game, not just to go play. Give us the scouting report for Saturday. Uh, uh, we got to uh, uh, control the boards because they are very strong and tough on the inside. If we can rebound, the, uh, we can win the war on the rebounds, I think we'll be fine. Uh, they motion offense causes you a lot of problems because they try to lure you to sleep. So our guys got to use their athleticism, but at the same time stay patient and just stay solid on defense. I think we'll be fine. A 1-0 and start to the year. Couldn't ask for it to go any better. Congratulations, uh, Coach. Uh, thanks, Steve. Head Coach Robert Moore as we – Put things away here from Columbus, Georgia on this Thursday evening, wrapping things up 80-65, to 65, the final again. We're back here on Cougar Sports TV for you on Friday, November.